Welcome to today's COVID-19 update. We're speaking with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Minister Anthony, again, thank you so much for speaking with us. Well, thank you very much for having me on the program. All right, so let's get right into it. Can you give us an update on President's College and perhaps how many uh, tests were done in students and if you have a figure for how many of them are positive? Well, as I said yesterday, we had about 40 more students to be tested yesterday. And so we completed everyone who is right now in the dorms at President's College. We have tested all of them. So for those uh, that we did the swabbing yesterday, um, we're going to get those results uh, today. Uh, so, so far we have eight students who tested positive and they're all isolated. All right. Uh, what plans are in place to do uh, contact, contact tracing? The areas from which these students came from, we have informed the RHOs. So the RHOs have been um, uh, working with their staff to do contact tracing. In some cases, some of these students came out from the interior. Uh, so we have already initiated that process of contact tracing. All right. Also an update on Region 1, uh, Kubana specifically. I know that you've been, the team has been monitoring it. What about the other communities as well? Yeah, what well, you recall about two weeks ago, we had about 62 cases in Quibana. That has now been reduced to 39 cases, and uh, we expect that that would drop even further. Uh, the surrounding communities, uh, we have seen a number of cases, but we have been monitoring them, and we feel that um, it's stable. We have a medical team that is present in the area, so they are offering medical care if needed. But so far we have had really mild cases, um, and they have been working with, with those persons to ensure that um, you know, everything is uh, okay with them. All right. So in terms of the other communities, no need for a lockdown at, at this time? At this point, no. We have... Um, we have less than 20 cases, and uh, the medical team that is assigned to that area has been monitoring. So we don't envisage any lockdown for the surrounding communities. Okay, yesterday when we spoke, you indicated that you had um, another medical team on standby just to give support to St. Cuthbert Mission. Uh, what is What has happened overnight? So at St. Cuthbert, we've actually added uh, another doctor to the uh, team that al is already there. And so that person would have been there from yesterday. Uh, we continue to monitor the residents um, of St. Codbert, so we continue to do testing. Uh, yesterday, we uh, took off an additional set of swabs. And uh, as of today, we now have about 145 cases of uh, COVID-19 in St. Codbert's mission. We expect as we continue testing, we will find additional persons who would test positive and we have put uh, restrictions of movement in and out of St. Cuthbert's mission. Uh, we are aided by, by the uh, police and the CDC who is assisting us in um, restricting movements. We have spoken to the village council, um, ourselves and the Ministry of Amerindian Affairs about three days ago and um, they have agreed uh, to this intervention and they are collaborating with us to ensure that uh, we keep the residents in there safe. Um, we also have the medical team that we have there, they would monitor the residents to see whether or not uh, people move from mild to more moderate or severe symptoms and if they detect such movements then they would move those uh, patients out and bring them down to the hospital. So uh, we are constantly monitoring and evaluating uh, the people that we have in St. Cuthbert's mission. Of course, and the same principle from Region 1 would apply to spraying and education and so similar, on. Similar, yeah, similar measures have been taken. All right, uh, talking about that, when we uh, initially, when they had the lockdown in Kubana, um, in terms of the livelihood of the people in the area, uh, support was given. How is that with St. Cuthbert as well? We have already um, initiated that and we have sent in hampers. CDC was in there distributing hampers over the weekend. And um, so they have adequate, I would say, adequate provision. That, um, 
to be able to uh, withstand the lockdown. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know that this particular lockdown was sort of voluntary on the part of the community. Uh, what, if you can remind us, um, how and when is a lockdown implemented? Well, we assess the, um, the amount of cases that we have in the community, how closely knit that community is, what kind of social interaction they have within the community. And, um, and then we make a determination. So in this case, we have seen a quick spike of cases, and we feel that the way to contain that is to ensure that we restrict movements, and which is what we are doing. Okay. I have a question from outside. Now that uh, testing is being done uh, so much, and just to add to that we have the capacity to do more testing now, um, we know that the National Public Health Reference Lab and Eureka, they're conducting it. Are there any other facility that perhaps is applying or have been given approval? Uh, there are a number of facilities that are applying for doing to do different types of testing. So those that uh, we have at least two facilities who have now applied to do PCR testing, and they would be evaluated by the Ministry of Health, their personnel, to look at uh, whether or not they have all the, the things in place, the elements in place. Uh, which would include whether they have trained personnel, equipment, types of equipment that they have, um, you know, how do you collect samples, procedures, and so forth. We have a checklist that we have uh, been working with, and this uh, checklist from CARFA. And so once people meet those requirements, then we are able to give them uh, a license. So there are two entities right now that would be under evaluation. And once that evaluation is completed and they meet the requirements, they would be granted license. There are other institutions that have applied to us to do the antigen tests, um, the antigen rapid tests, right? Uh, which is dif different from the antibody tests. So those uh, entities, we are evaluating them, the, the specific tests that they have sent to us, and we would be responding to them shortly. Okay. Uh, just a little bit of clarity. On the previous dispensation, someone was given permission to carry out this testing, but I believe that when you came in, you found that not all the criteria was met. Can you tell us uh, what a lab has to do? What are some of the basic things that they have to do in order to be able to get permission to carry out the test? Well, as I said, we have a checklist from CARFA and we are following that checklist. So a couple of things. One, uh, when somebody, uh, first of all, when you take off a sample, um, that sample should be taken off in certain conditions. So we need to assure ourselves that we are doing that in the right way. When that sample is taken off, it's put in a particular medium, and then it's um, collected and documented and so forth. So we have to ensure that that process is also uh, properly done. Then when you finish that process, it goes into processing to ensure that we can amplify the virus. So we have to look at um, whether they have proper processes in place to make sure that that happened, to extract the, the virus. And then, of course, um, what types of laboratory equipment they have to ensure that they can do proper PCR testing. Uh, and, of course, uh, the process of releasing the results and so forth. So there are a number of elements um, in this whole chain of testing. And once you meet those requirements, then we, we license you. And in addition to equipment and having proper documented process, uh, one of the main concerns would be safety. So these processes, a lot of them, you have to do them in safety cabinets that can prevent any um, virus from spreading or anything of the sort. So those safety pro procedures must be in place. So we look for those as well. Uh, personnel that you have must be appropriately trained uh, to be able to do this specific procedure that we are asking for. And then, of course, there's a, a compulsory requirement 
that all testing that is done, you have to report them to the Ministry of uh, Health to ensure that we can now um, have a, a good idea of what is happening. So it's not just the positive cases, but all cases that have been tested. Uh, those stats have to come to the Ministry of Health and the personnel within the Ministry would normally compile a statistical report for us to have an understanding of the dynamics of the epidemic. Okay, and with so uh, much more testing happening, do we have enough of the tests? And I know that last week you made an appeal for the private sector because you had gotten a donation from Ansem Akal. So do we have enough tests? So far we do. and. Um, we have already started to put in new orders so that we can have adequate stock. Uh, you would recall um, about mid-August we bought about 40,000 test kits. We had another donation of about 10,000 from uh, the government of Barbados. So we have about 50,000 test kits that we are operating with. But we don't want to run short so we are constantly um, buying. In addition to the PCR test kits that we have, uh, we are also uh, looking at now using the rapid test kits, the antigen kits, but in conjunction with the PCR test. So we'll do the antigen rapid tests, and if it's necessary, then we go to the PCR testing. So. Um, we have a protocol that has been worked out and we'll be rolling out those antigen tests um, very shortly, especially in, in the interior communities. And I think about 20,000 you had indicated. We're, we're looking at uh, initially to have 20,000 and um, we, we probably would purchase some more. Uh, you know, we'll see how they work and we'll do some evaluation. Okay. Well, Mr. Anthony, thank you very much. But before we go, uh, yesterday we spoke about uh, one of the vaccines that's in the third stage right now. We got a little information that perhaps uh, I think a Guyanese is on the team that, that is um, do, assisting with all that. Uh, could you give us any information? I mean, it's exciting news for us. <laughs> Always proud of Guyanese doing good stuff. My understanding is that one of the scientists who were involved of the vaccine is Guyanese. Uh, his name is uh, Vidya Rupchan, and uh, he has been working out of the Pfizer facility um, in the New York area, and uh, they were very instrumental in developing the vaccine. So the vaccine that uh, Pfizer now has shown that, uh, from the, the stats that we have, that it's about 90% effective. Uh, this uh, scientist was one of the uh, persons who were involved in making the vaccine. Well, you know, they say Guyanese, we're like salt, we're everywhere. <laughs> in this particular case, um, this is welcome, uh, good news. So thank you so much again for speaking with us today. Thank you. Well, that's it for today's COVID-19 update. Of course, we've just spoken with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Remember, for more information, you can log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and the Ministry of Health's website as well, health.gov.gy, and of course, our social media platforms.